like, share, and subscribe. And ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. Uh, you might not be notified. To be honest, let's be fair. Uh, you, you have done everything you needed to be, to be notified. However, however, I am one of those... Uh, uh, deplorable people that YouTube, well, well, I'm very happy for the platform you give me, uh, uh, Jest, uh, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy, I'm, the, the, there's no limitations on the happiness I have for the platform I have, uh, uh, the limitations is, you know, I wish I was on an equal playing field with people who are a little bit less uh, uh, deplorable. Now, I don't think I think of myself as being that deplorable. I think all people are intrinsically, e uh, uh, I was going to say evil. No, equal. I, I guess evil. No, all people are int intrinsically equal. I really do, right? It's really my genuine, genuine. Why, why wouldn't you? I, I, I don't understand the point of view that's not, but okay, okay. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, could you hit, yeah, hit the little button? That'd be great. Uh, like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are very, very good things. I'm asking a bit of a controversial question with this uh, video. One of the great things about YouTube, of course, is uh, uh, you're able to turn around on a dime. I had a video set up to go out today. Nope, no, no. This one came up. I was doing a live stream last night while I was looking over... Uh, who is it? The new person who's rumoured to be the companion probably is. My guess is it is. Uh, she is, not it. God, please don't take that out of context. I guess as she probably is. Uh, uh, and I thought, wait a minute, this, this looks like a normal, you know, youngish, attractive girl. Uh, 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 that's kind of like the template. What, what's, what did, okay. And then going through it, I found out that she uh, she was deaf. Somebody said in the comments, well, you know, I think a companion should be able to talk. I'm like, what are you doing? I thought she could, I, it never occurred to me. And then I started, what, we're going to, you're going to see my whole uh, 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 voyage of discovery tonight. And I've had some time to think about it. I was like, what, wait, what? What? What did Jack? Well, who did Jiggy want? So, uh, if you want to see my live reaction, go go for my my, my uh, uh, live stream. It was from it was from last night, and it was I was so blown away. I I, I clicked the wrong button, and took myself off air for a couple of minutes by mistake because I was like, what? What? Ah! So I've had some time to think about it, uh, uh, and I think we need, need need to have a bit of a chat about it. Now, asking controversial questions gets me in trouble, right? And I'm always upset when I'm in trouble, but I, I, I don't really have so much ability not to ask controversial questions. When uh, Shooty Gutwell was, was cast, I asked the question, is the Doctor a uh, uh, intrinsically Caucasian character? I, I genuinely don't think he is, right? I really, really don't think he is. There are some people in the audience uh, who do think they are, and I don't think they're racist because of that. They feel that, uh, you know, it's been kind of one way for 60 years. Uh, that The first 60 years does somewhat nail in the characteristics of the character, which I, I think is a fair comment, right? Uh, uh, the people said, uh, you know, if there was a... Uh, they cast a black doctor in the 80s. Fine, okay, but sometimes going on the bridge. Now, for me, again, I it's not not it's a non-issue. It's really a, genuinely a non-issue. Uh, uh, but I'm not so eager to call the people racist who find it in it. Maybe they are, right? I don't know. Maybe maybe they are, but I'm not so eager to to run to that um, because. I don't think they are racist, right? Well, maybe. I again, I really don't know. So, ask, but asking that question got me in trouble, right? People just assumed I was going to say yes, yes. Oh, keep there. Yeah, they should be sent back home to where they come from. No, he comes from Scotland. Well, I guess Rwanda, really. But Scotland, you know, like I have to, I have to say, as a, yeah, as an aside, I just find that very, very English, right? A Rwandan refugee. Uh, growing up in Scotland, play, being Doctor Who. I, I, look, England is uh, uh, much unlike the, uh, as it's presented in the media. In, in my in my opinion, a very non-racist country, a very very open egalitarian country. Uh, uh, that's why I feel like this false diversity that I think the BBC really really likes, and the entertainment industry also really really likes. Uh, um, Makes it less so, right? Uh, uh, but I think, yeah, listen, I think I think England's always had a very welcoming nature. Uh, uh, and also, been. Uh, listen, you have racists everywhere. You've always had racists. You've always had bigots. But when push comes to shove, look, I mean, uh, uh, thankfully, thankfully, you had uh, 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 some, somebody who, who, who could see the truth about racism in, uh, uh, in, in, the, in the 1940s who ended up become, becoming prime minister, right? Everybody else was ready to roll over. But I think that's the real British... Spirit, right the british spirit is welcoming 
right? I, that's why I love living in London. Why I love growing up in London. It was so multicultural. It was wonderful, right? You had so many different cultures, and we were all just English. I remember when, when I was uh, uh, when I when I was engaged. I was at I was at my my parents' house. I told the story recently uh, with my uh, with my wife to be, and, and uh, she who's who's from Atlanta. And there was a knock at the door, and there was somebody there to fix the gas or something. And it was a black guy, right? But she he was speaking with an English accent, and she was like, "Oh my god." I never even, it blew her mind, right? It blew her mind because we're all just English, right? Which I think is lovely. I love, I'm very, very Jewy. You, you might have noticed. I love English Christmas because it's very, very English, right? I, I, I like Englishness. I grew up with it. I, I have affection for it. That's just, that's just who I am. Anyway, anyway, so uh, uh, we're going to be talking about di uh, diversity. We're going to talk about uh, uh, inclusivity and diversity. And if is it a is it a problem for storytelling? Uh, uh, normally, oftentimes it is. Now, is it going to be a problem for Russell D. Davis storytelling? I don't know. I, uh, I'm I'm a lot more nervous now than I was uh, two days ago. Right? I really, really, genuinely am because I I don't see a way around this. But again. That I don't see a way, a way around this just means I'm not Ralph Steve Davis and I don't don't have his talent. Uh, uh, or I might be 100% right and there's no way around it. Way around, Rob? Well, we're going to get to the whole thing. Before we get to it, like, share, subscribe, comment. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I, I sign up my Substack, my email newsletter. This very video may get me banned from YouTube, right? This very video might be the one. Sign up to Substack uh, where you'll be able to find me when in my, in my exile, however long it may be. Uh, do I, I think I have uh, a warning, not a strike against me. That's good. Um, so yeah, like, share, subscribe, comment, uh, uh, Substack. Uh, so you can sign up my pay Substack as well. My my free one. I've just got back into sending out content on on again. I send out my 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 uh, my videos every day on it. But the the my content content I just got uh, back into doing uh, uh, sending out. So I was well, I, I normally send out a. Uh, out of print Doctor Who book or something. And I put lots of bits and bobs from Doctor Who magazine, vintage Doctor Who magazine from the 80s, 90s, 2000s, right? Like ads. I love the ads, right? I love the ads. There, there was an ad for all these really cool masks that I couldn't afford at the time. Uh, uh, I wonder what, what whatever happened to them. You had like a, a Davros one and a, uh, 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 not so luring, did they? No, it was a Draconian mark. They were fantastic, right? So I put all that sort of stuff on it on as well. So sign up. It's fun. It's fun. Anyway, on Fridays, I send out uh, out of print books. They've been doing like the new adventures or uh, the eighth Doctor novels or the past Doctor novels or missing event. All the ones that are, uh, that are uh, you know, set out print. So I, I put in the first part of Interference, which is, a really strange eighth Doctor, third Doctor novel. I don't, I can't remember. Uh, Interference Part One. It's a two-part story, but this was really one of the tent poles of the eighth Doctor adventures from BBC Books, which is where they were kind of pulling it together. They had this awful companion that they was was like just built by committee, and all the writers hated the Sam Jones. I think it, all the writers hated the companion, uh, uh, and, and it became a feature of how two-dimensional this character was and far more interesting character was uh fritz kreener who uh uh was with the eighth doctor and those not uh, for a long time that the fritz ended up being played on big finish by i can't remember it was a bloke from eastenders it was like a you know a london cheeky chappy wide boy from uh, from eastenders and that really really worked i like fritz anyway anyway I so I'm, uh, part two is going to be uh go going out this week uh, uh and also i really want to start putting out the old alan moore uh, backup strips that that never that, that again have never been reprinted for some bizarre reason. I'm trying to decide whether or not to buy the the the, the Daleks com comic collection they're coming out within a, in a month. It's got the Return of the Daleks in, but do I care? Right, <laughs> that's basically it. It's just got that. I, mean, I like having all the Dalek stories in one one volume. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm, I keep going back on the thought, thoughts about it. Yeah, that's just me for you. Anyway, like, share, subscribe, comment, substack, all those things are good. Let's talk about diversity in casting. Uh, uh, or, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, uh, identity, uh, identity casting? No, that's not what I'm after. Uh, uh, oh, it's uh, uh, not stunt casting. What's the word? Not identity casting. Uh, um... Not diver uh, diversity hires, right? Diversity hires. Now, uh, 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 are they a good thing or a bad thing? Well, you can say yes. They, they, you go either way on them, right? You, uh, uh, I'm not 
I'm not one for erasure, right? I like British society to be reflect, Western society to be reflected as Western society genuinely is, which has uh, very, very diverse, right? Uh, 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 but I, I think there's a danger that when you, when, uh, when you, when you, when you're trying to be diverse, when you're trying to show people who aren't on screen as much as they used to, as much as you know, TV, you, you, uh, uh, you used to have them on, it becomes about their diversity rather than about story and it's it's very very it's very very easy for that to happen now i've never seen ralph steve davis uh do anything like that oh that's awful that just doesn't work including i mean uh, uh, um including hiring disabled actors right for years and years you had uh ruth uh ruth madley in it and she was great in that right it was a great character that I genuinely, genuinely liked, right? I really do. Also, I really want to be clear, like, from a, on a cultural level, uh, I live in Israel, and we are very, very handicap-friendly, right? We are a, a cultural, on a cultural level, because, you know, there's so, so, so many... Uh, we have a higher percentage of people in wheelchairs than most because many people have been injured in the many wars that, we, that we've had thrust upon us, right? Uh, either in combat, uh, uh, you know, so, 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 uh, serving and defending the nation, uh, or, it, you know, we, you know, we have bomb shelters. This is actually my bomb shelter here. Every house has a bomb shelter, and we have the, the Iron Dome. We have lots of things to protect its citizens, but we're protecting them from deadly force, and deadly force often re re uh, results in injury. We have a higher per capita ratio of people who are handicapped in Israel. And the idea, of, and that's why we always have a, a few more handicapped park. I don't know if that's the same now. The uh, handicapped parking in, in where, everywhere you go. Literally everywhere. And it's, it's a major social taboo, right? Do not take a handicapped spot if you're not handicapped that is uh, uh not done right and quite right so right quite rightly so so i i am all for everybody feeling seen i don't i don't see why anybody should feel not seen right i am totally for that um i don't know if this push for diversity is to benefit the people who uh, are less are more diverse shall we say or if it's to benefit the people who are pushing for diversity my my thoughts are probably the latter rather than than the former right but again again uh, uh, uh you know I, I haven't seen rusty davis make uh make anything i thought oh that that was uh not very good but let's start start the story at the beginning so this was uh, well, I thought it was longer ago. This was this story came out uh, uh, just under third. Was it three weeks ago? Uh, Thirteen days ago. I'm recording this. I'm recording this today uh, on uh, August the twenty fourth, twenty twenty two. Doctor Who casting more disabled actors for new era. So again, this uh, uh, um, this it is very hard line to walk to make them characters and not tokens, right? To make it not tokenism. Uh, so when I read this, and, you know, the character they have on screen, Diane, was complete. it was just a weird character that seemed to be there to have one arm and not much else and be better than everybody, even though she has one arm. Look, look a, a truth about Doctor Who is this. You need to be physically able to be... A, uh, you, at least you have been beforehand, right, up until now. You need to be physically able to be able to entertainingly and excitingly tell the stories that are Doctor Who. You need essentially you need to be able to run up and down a corridor, right? If you can't run up and down a corridor, it might not be for you, right? I, I, and uh, I, uh, the thumbnail I was going to do for this video, I haven't made it yet. The thumbnail I was going to do for this video was uh, uh, what well, is going to be a Dalek talking to uh, Rose Ailing, whatever her name is, the person who's uh, probably the new 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 companion, saying, "You will, you are our prisoner." And I was going to have a go. Would would that? And like to a, a the, the the death voice, right? Right there, right there. That will get me in a lot of trouble. I can't do that. I can't. And I don't want to take the piss out of her for uh, uh, which is basically what it was for for uh, having that death voice, which is weird, right? This is just an aside. You know, uh, uh, we have we have a large deaf. <laughs> this is so bizarre. We have a large deaf community where I live, like let like, on my block. Right, so uh, um, there's a couple. There's a couple of people here who are deaf. They're deaf kids. 
no one speaks as badly as this actress does. They all, I mean, like, they all seem uh, uh, much more fluid in the talking. And I think the talking is probably quite, quite important idea. Same, same with uh, 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 Ruth Madley. It's okay to have uh, somebody in a wheelchair. And again, from a cultural level, people being in wheelchairs, are, 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 we, I don't want to disparage uh, it in any way, shape or form, right? And I can see you being in a wheelchair for one story, two story. I think one story, basically. But more than that, you know, you've got to find ways of, like, getting up and down corridors and up and down stairs. I, it, it, you know, it, like, okay, you're fine against the Daleks, right? Yeah, unless you're deaf and also in a wheelchair. You're fine against the Daleks until now. Now now, now, now they can fly. But, like, you know, you, you, you can't be wheeling yourself down the corridor squeakily, again, you know, away from a... Uh, advancing horde of Sontarans, like, is that, it's going to look silly on the third story, right? I mean, you can, it's the sort of thing you can suspend disbelief for a bit. And again, I'm happy to do that in, in the efforts of inclusion. Um, because I don't think, I don't think somebody young in a wheelchair should feel like they're uh, lesser, right? I really, honestly, I don't. Uh, um, yeah, but I, I think this will have that will have that effect. But that's really the the the, uh, the case on so many things now. I was listening this morning about there's a uh, the vast majority of, of underage people doing uh, uh, sexually tra uh, uh, transitioning are young girls around the age of 15 having double mastectomies and, and some in some cases uh, is it vaginoplasty? I don't know some you know, hysterectomies whatever you know there are lots of Quite extreme surgery. So there's a Reddit forum with like that's forty thousand strong and growing, and daily huge pro prominent posts by people who said they've gone through this and are now suicidal. Like I, it, it. So the reason that this happened ostensibly was because uh, trans youth were suicidal. And now we have more people suicidal than before. I mean, so uh, um, I think this is kind of a similar thing, right? If you uh, um, diversity casting with with handicapped people is it, very hard to to uh, work around the storytelling. And it, it, I mean, again, you can do it in a kind of slight of hand, blink and miss it sort sort of way. But uh, uh, but uh, uh, but on an ongoing narrative, I think that's probably impossible. That being said, I haven't seen what Rusty ever got mine. I don't know if this if, if this woman is indeed being cast. My guess is probably probably. Anyway, so let's read this first story. Uh, Sci-fi shows casting has spoken about the importance of of casting as inclusively as possible in the future. Um, again, I think it's coming from the best intentions. I really do. I think it's coming from absolutely the best intentions, mostly. <laughs> but I think those best intentions are instantly corrupted by uh, uh, vanity, personal vanity, and the desire to appear progressive, uh, to, to get social cu currency. Uh, uh, and so, yeah, the people who you're supposed to be helping, you very, very quickly become dehumanized uh, it comes the, it's the exact opposite of what you intend to do diane being a great uh great example and i uh, um what didn't she like about dan <laughs> that, that, was, that was it dan lewis no john bishop is it is he called john bishop or dan lewis whoever what did he not i mean she was like he was like oh i mean he's a bit weird there's something going on with that character he lives on his own and he, he's a fake tour guide in but he loves liverpool but other than that, he seemed relatively normal, you know, washed and reasonably good looking. I, uh, um, I, I just don't get it. Like, uh, and she went out with him and then she's like, no, I'm not interested in you. Uh, OK, uh, fine. But what was the point of the character? Right. Uh, she didn't really seem to do much other than other than provides a bit of danger for Dan. For not for you know for not long, but well, it's my Jim will write in it. Blink, blink and miss it. Doctor Who's uh, casting director has revealed that the show plans to cast as inclusive as possible going forward, particularly in regards to casting more disabled actors in upcoming episodes. Andy Pryor, who has been Doctor Who's casting director since 2005, spoke to 2000 uh, Doctor Who magazine via Cult Box about his plans for uh, David's return in 2023. I like casting as inclusively impossible," he said. Uh, "It's more interesting. Also, if you can, if you can't cast 
diversity on Doctor Who. What uh, what can you cast on? Well, that you know, you're making a good point there. I mean, Nabil Shaban and Syl, I think, was really groundbreaking. I mean, why was it groundbreaking? Because you had somebody with a disability who had been so normalised, right? Had been so uh, like you were able to show him as the villain rather than as the uh, uh, you know as the hero. And Nabil Shaban was fantastic in that role, right? Just uh, he he reveled in it. And kids loved him. We loved him in the day, right? He was a great, great character. Uh, and we and we weren't going, oh, we hate disabled people. No, it was great, right? It was great. And, I, I, um, yeah, you want to cast people as aliens, whatever. It's fine. But I, if, you're, if, you're, if your companion, um, well, we're going to look if your companion is who it looks like it's going to be. It, I, I don't see a way of being able to do it. Without uh, 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 with it being organic, right? I, I mean, I really don't. I mean, maybe there is. There might be a way, but I really, I really can't see it. All right. Uh, uh, but again, I'm not Rusty Davis. Uh, well, uh, when can you do it? He gets in. It goes. It, it goes everywhere on the planet and others. And you don't want to see the same kind of people all the time. I, I agree, right? You don't want to see exclusively middle-class white people with RP axes. Well, actually, I have to tell you, I kind of do, right? You know, that's what I grew up with. I understand that's not the world, right? I understand that's not the world. Uh, uh, and I'm fine to move forward, right? I'm fine. I really, I, I know I'm wrong in that. And I'm happy for, again, the canvas that's television to reflect the audience. Uh... I'm not happy for it to reflect the desires of uh, white liberal people wanting to uh, wanting to feel good about themselves, right? Which is where I feel this might uh, might well be coming from. Uh, Pryor added that Davis feels the same way about diversity casting, uh, and they are more keen than ever before to focus on inclusivity. But why? I, I honestly, I, I I don't. I think from. The 2005 to 2015, we sort of lived in a utopia. I, I, it, 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 yeah, we, we pretend we did it now. I mean, other than you, you had Obama just uh, uh, destroying the world. Uh, uh, not quite quite as well as, uh, as Biden, but right. I mean, you know, causing ISIS and uh, uh, whatever, so many things. But uh, in terms of inclusivity, in, in terms of d diversity. It, it, we lived it, it was a post-racist society it was a post-bigoted society nobody went oh no there's somebody in a wheelchair oh right nobody did that right i mean nobody i i knew of right and it, and it would be weird if somebody did right I mean, nobody cared if you were black nobody cared if you were gay um it, 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 that that was but we live in this like weird fantasy world where uh, uh, like five years ago, it was we were literally living under a uh, uh, an alternate reality where the naughty National Socialists from Germany won World, world War Two, right? No, I, I mean it, uh, again, it all goes back to Trump and Brexit, like everything, and it go, always goes back to Trump and Brexit. And if you want to take it back, well, take it one step further back, it's just people not being able to deal with being wrong. I mean, you know, why, why do we have the increase in sanity today? Why do we have these tens of thousands of young girls uh, 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 ha you know, having double mastectomies, then being suicidal? And I'm not making those numbers. Why are we having that? Uh, uh, it's because people don't want to feel bad about themselves, right? People don't want to feel like they've done anything wrong. Uh, uh, I guess it's human nature, but really, at some point, maybe, maybe don't be so selfish. Don't be so uh, uh, destructive to the world. Uh, and prior it uh, feels the same way about inclusive. So right now we're casting more, uh, more diversity in terms of ethnicity. We're casting more disabled actors, but there's always more we can do. Yes, there's always more you can do, but it's not going to work very well. Again, you know, somebody's on a mobility scooter, they're not going to be able to make it down a corridor. I mean, why, why have I never been in the running for Doctor Who other than not being an actor? Right? I mean, other than that, because I have a well, if I'm going to be uh, exact, I have a medical condition called being a fat cunt. 
right? And I don't really see Doctor Who being working well as a fat cunt waddling up and down freaking corridors. Look, I was just in Jerusalem for a weekend with my wife. I nearly died, okay? The whole place, it's my college town. I lived there, you know, from uh, 96 to, uh, 91 to 96, right? Uh, uh, and I forgot everything's on a freaking hill, up and down hill. So I was like waddling up and down uh, uh, hills on the way to get from pizza to ice cream to candy uh, 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 okay. that's not gonna work in dr fucking who is it really it, I, I hate i hate to be the one to tune you into reality fm but that's still the case yeah uh uh, uh you know dr who, not so much a fat cunt right although they did say richard griffiths so also put, uh, was a fantasy dr who at one point uh um yeah, probably best he wasn't. Although I still think he could probably got up and down a corridor. I am a fatter cunt than Richard Griffiths. <laughs> Is he still alive? Uh, at least I was in the. Uh, uh, I am a fatter cunt now than he than he was in the eighties. Okay, there you go, nineties. Um, certainly, there's no uh, uh, no excuse to cast a disabled actor in a disabled role nowadays. Well, yeah, I mean. Yes and no, which we're going to be looking at in a minute with uh, uh, Rose, whatever her name is. But we're also trying to cast disabled actors and roles that aren't necessarily written for uh, written as disabled. That see that really worked in years and years. Ruth Madley, it was a disabled role, and freaking awesome, right? She was great. Uh, we don't always want disabled casting to be issue casting. It's very hard to make it not issue casting, right? It's very, very difficult. I mean, look, when you go when you, Yasmin Finn is in it, you know, uh, uh, she's a girl with a dick. That's somewhat of a, a talking point, right? Uh, it's like, oh, uh, you're a girl then. Oh. And you have a penis. Okay. That's somewhat of an issue, right? I, I, I understand in today's world, they no. No, I see no difference. No, I, it's kind of, it kind of is, kind of is. Um... So if I know the pretty high disabled actors to take on disabled uh, disabled roles uh, with deaf actress Sophie, St Sophie Stone playing Cass in season nine. Uh, well, more recently, Nadia Albina, who was born without a full right arm, was introduced as Diane. Again, it was just yes, very, very on the nose. <laughs> uh, I'm there because I have one arm, right? Uh, uh, you know, why, why am I here? Because I'm harmless. You know, I'm sorry that joke had to be told. So anyway, with that with that lengthy introduction, let's talk about the news uh, uh, from Screen Rant, of course. Doctor Who's new companion rumour must come true! It's too perfect! I mean, it's going to be... Well, first, uh, rumours suggest uh, Strictly Come Dancing stuff. Strictly Come Dancing. I thought she was an actress. Strictly Come Dancing star Rose Eiling Ellis will play the next companion in Doctor Who. Hopefully these reports are true. So, well, so let's, uh, 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 you know, let's, the proof is in the point. Let's, let, let, let's, let's have a look. So I've got some clips of her here that we will uh, peruse together. This is her in, in EastEnders. So this guy's kind of, kind of about three minutes. We're not watching the whole thing. Oh, that's it. Going to be turning the sound up. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, sound. Doink. I am broken. Stop trying to fix me. I don't need it. I'm not trying to fix you. I'm just explaining the options. Okay, so right now she's striking. I mean, when I first saw her, I'm like, oh, look at that. A, you know, a, a reasonably uh, uh, attractive, shackable young lady. That's kind of what the template for a Doctor Who companion's always been, right? Uh, uh, something for the dads. I mean, yes, yeah. So uh, uh, then she starts talking. Well, so, so this is the clip that blew my mind. Very charming language like that. <laughs> <laughs> What was all that about then? You're obviously not short of a few quid. My mum's getting a new one. So I grabbed it. You're not deaf? No, my, uh, my boyfriend is. Of course it's your boyfriend. It's these standards in 2020 bloody too. I right, look, the point is this. Uh, um, if there's a bit more. What's his name? I probably know him. Uh, I doubt it. I mean, he's only just lost his hearing, so I... Joking. And listen, it, it, 
just, I, 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 this is the only acting I've seen her do. It hasn't blown me away, right? And normally, I, I, honestly, I base my uh, uh, my rating of an actor's ability on on their ability to take me into the drama, right? A and instantly, I'm taken out of the drama, right? Uh, uh, because it feels like oh, they're they're making a point <laughs> about about deaf people are people too. I agree with you, right? I agree with you. Uh, um, uh, and I'm not saying it's impossible. I, I just don't. I, I'm having trouble imagining, uh, uh, imagining an ongoing companion who, who, who you know, you can't really understand very well. Which I can't really understand her very well. And it's not my fault. It's that she, she hasn't been taught enough baritone in her in in, in her voice lessons, right? And, and uh, added to that, she she doesn't strike me as Meryl Bloody Streep, you know. Uh, uh, Maybe she is. Maybe she is. But uh, so many times, so many times I look at something and go, well, that's not going to work. And, and um, so many times, it's absolutely correct. Now, I've given them a pass on everything thus far, right? You know, like Yasmin Finney. Okay, look, trans people exist. Uh, uh, you're having a character that's trans, that's okay. If, you, if that character becomes the companion, it's all going to be about the character being trans. Uh, um, okay, so, but the, I, I don't really want that, right? I don't think that's a good thing. Uh, um, uh, same, same, same with her. I, it's going to be, a, I mean, maybe it will be, maybe it won't be. It's going to be about her being, uh, being deaf because it's very noticeable as soon as she starts speaking. I, it, I mean, it just is. I, I don't want to tell you. And again, and how are you going to talk to the Daleks? Daleks can't bloody sign again. I, I that's got to be I, that would that's going to be somewhat of the uh, 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 the thumbnail. But yeah, look, uh, what well, well, I mean, like what's she going to read? The 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 ear lights? No, I, I I don't know. I mean, but then and then you have to do is have come up with some kind of sci-fi device to get around the disability. So what's the point of having the disability? Right, yeah, you can have Rachel Madley as a companion and put her in a, in a rocket chair that flies around. That's fine. At that point, you might as well just cast somebody who can run up and down bloody stairs. And I want to be clear, I don't want to disparage somebody who has, doesn't have the ability to run up and down, uh, up and down stairs, mainly because I'm one of them. I, mean, you know, I, to, I didn't have the ability to walk up a slow hill, right? a gentle slope. I mean, I did. I, we had an ice cream store at the end, so I, 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 I was encouraged. But other than that, uh, uh, um, you know, it, it, it's, uh, uh, it just feels like this is going to get in the way of the storytelling, right? It feels to me it's going to get in the way of the storytelling, uh, I was, that's where I've been in, like, in Russell We Trust. And I do! I really do, but, boy. Uh, I mean, we really need to start seeing something else. And, look, this just might not be... This just She might be in it for an episode. She might be the... I don't know. If she's a companion, it, we might fall in love with her, right? It might be such an incredible compa uh, a character, right? That that you, you, you see through the disability, which is what Russell was, which is what everybody wants, right? Uh, uh, if that's the case, fan freaking tastic, right? Fantastic. And Russell's very good at making uh, writing characters. I, I I was talking last night on my live stream as well about uh, uh, Voyage of the Dam because I'm going through all, all, all the Wilfair episodes right now. Uh, uh, and yeah, the the brilliance of how quickly he was able to uh, sketch out the characters so he knew exactly who they were, like the people eating the fat people eating the buffalo wings. I love them. I loved everybody because he makes them real characters. So uh, um. Maybe uh, it, this character, will, if if this is the companion, maybe this character will be so uh, compelling it'll make me it'll, it'll make me go beyond uh, uh, the uh, struggling to be able to 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 understand them, right? Maybe, but it seems to be you're putting a stumbling block in front of you at the at the very beginning when you need to reestablish Doctor Who as the world beating brand that it always used to be, which is why he's coming back. I mean, let's be fair. The reason it's coming back is otherwise Doctor Who will be dead. They, they couldn't they couldn't give this to anybody else. Nobody was interested. It was a tainted brand. Anyway. Uh, I mean look, she's reasonably easy on the eye. That that there is that. I'm going for her. Uh rumors are swirling that Rose Ailing Ellis has been cast as the companion in Doctor Who. Uh, and she'll be the perfect actress. Why should she be perfect? Because he makes you she makes you feel so good about yourself by saying she's the perfect actress. That's why. 
Yeah, no, she's not the perfect. Wait, what's that? What? Who? What? I mean, well, could I want the Salorian are wearing their their face masks things? I mean, I, I, I get in the cell. Whoop! Bang! Okay, I, okay. <laughs> I I don't see this lasting long, right? Uh, wait, wait, the uh, next year will be a thrilling one for lovers of Doctor Who, we hope. The longest running science fiction TV show will play a key part in the BBC centenary. That's this year, not next year. Centenary television with Geordie Whittaker bowing out. Look, you only bow out if you haven't done absolutely terribly, right? I mean, uh, 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 um, Who's it? Uh, Kenny Lay. Remember, do, you, do you remember Enron, right? Who destroyed the banking system, essentially, uh, 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 in the, what was it, 90s, 2000s? Yeah, uh, yeah, he didn't bow out, right? He uh, uh, probably faked his death and ended up l living out his life in luxury on a, on a tropical island. Maybe, maybe a pedophile island. Maybe he lived on Epstein's pedophile island. W wouldn't be surprised. W w who, listen. If you remember who Kenny Lay was, this was during uh, Bush Bush Two, right? Was it? Yeah, Dick Cheney. I remember Dick Cheney going, "Oh, I, I, uh, we've got, I got complete faith in uh, uh, Enron. Uh, they just go the extra mile." And <laughs> that was embarrassing. But anyway, uh, um, so yeah, you know, that that's when it rock was, and it, it it was one of the major things in the crash in the two thousands. Uh, 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 but you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> then mysteriously he died before he went to trial. Uh, uh, yeah, he's totally not living out his life on uh, uh, Epstein's paedophile life, right? Or was. Um, where are we up to? Uh, looking beyond that to 2023, uh, Doctor Who will celebrate 6th anniversary of Star Wars. Rusty Davis returning as showrunner. We hope. Uh, uh, in truth, the little is known about the upcoming Davis era, uh, dubbed RTD2. By Whovians. Yeah, I like that. Yes, but I call it RTD2. It will feature the return of the mystery. Uh, it will feature the mysterious return of David Tennant and Catherine Tate. Expected to reprise their roles as the Tenth Doctor and fan favorite companion Donna Noble. I'm not expecting that. Uh, I I'm expecting a Tenth ish Doctor and a Donald ish Noble, but we'll find out what it's going to be. The next Doctor will be played by Shooty Catwell in a thrilling casting decision. And again, I think it's uh, uh, a thrilling to you because it makes you feel good about yourself saying it's thrilling, right? I don't think you really care about black people. I really genuinely don't, right? If you did, I think you would have been up in arms about John Baker's treatment by Disney, which is disgusting, right? Um, a, th a thrilling casting decision about uh, brings one of Britain's most promising stars into the TARDIS. Now, rumours are swirling that it will be joined by Rose Ailing, uh, Ailing Ellis, the show's first death companion. Ailing Ellis has confirmed uh, she has a new role, but she's currently unable to say anything about it. It sounds like she's a companion, right? It does sound like that. Maybe she's in for one story. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Maybe this is going to be a character that we'll fall in love with. I don't know. I really, I, wouldn't that be the best case scenario? It'll be the best case scenario for me. I'll be very, very, uh, very happy with that. Yeah, I always say, I'm always happiest when I'm wrong. Right? Yeah, if I'm Because I always over predict doom and gloom. Uh, casting Rose uh, Ailing and his companion will be a tremendous coup for Doctor Who. Really? Oh, right, because she's beating them off with a stick. No, no, oh, I can't do uh, uh, King Lear. No, uh, no, I, I, no, I can't make that move. I'm not going to be in Pirates of the Caribbean 17. No, no, you can't have me. It, really? It's not a coup, darling. Uh, until 2021, the year 21, uh, 28-year-old actor was best known for playing Frankie Lewis in the BBC soap opera EastEnders. Hardly a breeding ground for acting talent, I hate to tell you. Oh, are you deaf too? No, my boyfriend is. Really? Really? I mean, like, how, how is everybody gay in EastEnders, right? Why is cock so incredibly seductive to suck in EastEnders? Oh, everybody gets to EastEnders, they all oh, got to suck a cock. Oh, oh, I love sucking a cock. Yeah, even if it's a female one. Um, Because that's totally normal. No, nothing weird about that, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she uh, she joined uh, Britain's version of Dancing with the Stars, Strictly Come Dancing, and immediately won the nation's heart as Strictly Come Dancing's first death contestant. Why not be a human being, 
right? Why not be a human being? Like, I would love to get Noel Clark on uh, uh, on my channel to interview him and not about the sexual misconduct uh, allegations, which thankfully have crumbled to dust in front of us, right? Uh, uh, but about him, his life. You know, he's, he's a massive talent. I'd like to know what he thinks about Ah, oh, and, and you know, what he likes in TV, what he likes in movies, what he, what he, yeah, what his influences are, what his uh, aspirations are, you know, what uh, what he thinks is good entertainment, what he thinks is poor entertainment, what he thinks of the world. Yeah, you know, I, I, there's a whole human being there who's a very interesting person, far more interesting than either his skin color or you know these bogus allegations uh, le levied against him. Right, he, and and that's why the alligator levied against him because he's a talented guy. Right, maybe maybe they came after him because he disproves the narrative that England is intrinsically racist. Uh, uh, but that didn't didn't seem to bother Lenny Henry. Right, Lenny Henry, sparkling career. Right, incredible, but sparkling career, career beloved by the British public since I was a kid. Right, since uh, since he started essentially, uh, and now it's like, oh, England's all racist. Well, well why do we like you then? Um. Uh, we did notice you were black, right? You didn't like it. You're like, I understand you were, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Grappleby Grape Nuts. Uh, I love that. Uh, Jerry Bellamy, what is it? The, the, the horticulturist. Oh, Grappleby Grape Nuts. Uh, was his, uh, he, had, he put the big beard on. He was great. It didn't matter that he was black. Again, English people taking care of, taking the piss out of English people. There's people taking the piss out of yourself, which is great. Right? It was great. And he had a great... What was the bloody name of that guy? I can't remember now. Somebody somebody will uh, tell me in the comments. Uh, Ailing Ellis brought an unbridled joint enthusiasm to the dance floor. And she swiftly uh, proved to be a natural champion. Okay, so she can run up and down corridors. Okay? Uh, the British press delighted uh, in Rose Ailing's story. And took the opportunity to become a key player in representing the deaf community. Okay, none of this is saying uh, 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 she's a great actress, right? And I haven't seen her be a great actress. In, uh, in fairness to her, EastEnders may not be the place where you see great acting, right? That might not be the place where it goes. Um... Uh, uh, Rosalie, and she took the opportunity to become a clear uh, representative of the community. The directory of, uh, of one firm offering British sign language courses tells Radio One Newsbeat enrollment increased by a stunning two thousand percent during her time on the show. Why? What? I mean, what? 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 I understand you learn sign language and there's somebody you need to sign to. Right, I guess to be woke, I, I, I guess. And what what is woke? Woke is uh, um, woke is being. I you know I use the, use the term woke in terms of programming, in terms of entertainment, which is the platforming of ideology in an existent uh, fan base, something with an existent fan base. But I think if you, if you want to go to a, a deeper uh, uh, definition of woke, it's somebody demonstrating their awareness of the plight of others. Uh, I think that's the I think that's a, 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 a how they would they, they would view uh, view themselves, right? And I think to do that, they consider themselves meritorious. So almost universally, being woke is about narcissism, right? Being a uh, 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 self flagellating to a certain extent, right? Self -congr self congratulating. Why Rose? Uh, why Rose Ailing S would be perfect Doctor? P pray tell. I'm intrigued. When Ross D. Davis first launched Doctor in 2005, he chose to commit a high to a high profile and very strategic casting decision to ensure audience knew uh, the series aimed at the mainstream. Yeah, I mean, uh, um, I, I don't think he didn't see black actors, but uh, uh, but uh, um, Chris Eccleston got got the role. The casting of Shooting Gut well, as the next Doctor indicates that Davis is, is going for both talent uh, and profile again. He has a very... Cat See, this is why I'm, 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 uh, um, I'm, I'm hopeful, right? Because, I, again, I watched Voyage of the Dam last night, which uh, two nights ago, which is so designed to connect to the British public. So I'm hoping he can still do that, right? Um, and, and the casting so far has been incredibly strategic. Right. Firstly, David Tennant uh, bringing people back. 
Blade Redenant, Donna Earn, Catherine Tate bringing people back, uh, Yasmin Finney uh, to bring in her, the, that large demographic and that large TikTok, uh, the f uh, 14 billion TikTok followers or whatever that is, right? Very strategic casting, right? Uh, Shooting Gatwa. I think being uh, non-white was an issue for Davis, uh, uh, and I think that's what probably got through the door. I, I, I believed it when he said it, he gave a great, great audition. Maybe you're going to say the same thing about Rose as well. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, uh. Again, I've ne if you just look at the what, knowing what you know, right? Know what you know is what you have seen, what you've experienced. Is that uh, uh, he's only ever, if you liked his work, right? He's only ever produced high quality work. Uh, uh, this sounds a bit disturbing now, I must say. Um, meanwhile, uh, uh, Alien has trained by energy and joy. Uh, one second. Uh, uh, what's it? Shoot a gut where it is, is, is uh, um, go for talent and profile again, and Alien Ellis will reinforce the impression, ensuring Doctor Who drew attention from a wide range of viewers who's long uh, stopped, since stopped watching. They stopped watching... Because Chris Chibnall did pure identity casting, right? Did diversity hires. That's the, the, the basically the entirety of his uh, production team were diversity hires. Uh, uh, and that's why you stop watching, right? Because you hired somebody on their identity rather than their ability. Uh, uh, they, you didn't stop watching and go, no deaf people, fuck them. I'm not watching that. No! Again, all this is about you feeling good about yourself. Guy, guy who wrote this, right? It's all about being able to say, oh, what a joy. Oh, I'm so happy that Rose Ailing Ellis got the job. Oh, what a complete and utter joy. Uh, uh, I see nothing wrong in this at all. I, I, this gonna, I, I don't see how they're going to do it, be able to talk to monsters who, you know, normally their, their lip sync isn't that great. Did you see the Sea Devils? Uh, probably you didn't. In the uh, uh, Legend of the Sea Devils, they're, they're like... They're not, she's not going to be able to read those lips that well, right? Um, meanwhile, uh, Ailing uh, Alice's trademark energy and jo joy would lend itself perfectly to Doctor Who imbuing a sense of wonder and uh, in, in the star-faring and historical adventures. It's probably a good point they're making, right? That probably is a good point. The best Doctor Who companions serve as viewpoint characters. Again, exactly! Exactly! So you've got to write an incredibly compelling character that you completely connect to, and you put a stumbling block in front of that to start with, a hurdle that you need to get over. Can Davis write right around it? Probably. Is he going to? I don't know, right? I do not know. I hope so. <laughs> That's my bottom line. I do hope so. Uh, British viewers have already has, uh, uh, an enormous sense of empathy for Rose Ailing and having uh, reveled in a journey and strictly come dancing 2021, meaning she would surely make an instant rapport as a companion she's playing. Maybe. Uh, uh, David seems to be keen to relearn the lessons of his 2005 relaunch. And this casting fits the pattern well. Hopefully it won't be long before this particular Doctor Who rumor is confirmed. So, uh, I don't think it's going to be long. I think we're, I think it's under a week till, till uh, it will be confirmed. Um, I, I look, I'm reserving judgment till I see anything, right? I am reserving judgment. Uh, 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 <laughs> I just, uh, yeah. Is this going to work? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, uh, can, can I see it working? No, I really can't. I really can't. Uh, uh, if I could see it working, BBC will probably be, be hiring me to run Doctor Who, right? But I just cannot see it working. Uh, I, 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 and I'm open to being wrong about this, right? I am genuinely 100% open to being wrong about it, and I really hope I am. I really, look, bottom line, I hope this new iteration of Doctor Who is going to be fantastic, and we're all going to love it, right? I hope we're all going to love it as much as we like the first iteration uh, of uh, Rusty Davis. I, I, that genuinely, genuinely... What I, uh, what I, what I, what I hope for. This makes you go, wait, what? <laughs> Again, if you want to see my reaction, go watch my live stream last night. I li literally fell off my chair. I was like, what? What? Who? What? How? Huh? I mean, I wouldn't be more surprised if they, if they uh, did cast somebody as a fat cunt to play uh, Doctor Who, waddling up and down the corridor uh, um, in his mobility scooter. It's just, it, it, no, no, <laughs> you know. 
And I don't hate people who are fat cunts in mobility scooters. I just don't think they, they give the right impression of Doctor Who trying to get up and down a freaking corridor, right? I, I, that's just me for you. Just, just, what, what, just one man's opinion. So there you go. Uh, what do you think? <laughs> do you think this is a, a disaster waiting to happen? Or do you think uh, uh, they're going to pull out the bag? Time, time, uh, as always, will tell. My name is Fila Beck and the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. <laughs>